Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes! MEC is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. MEC is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. MEC has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the MEC family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain-sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Local farmers, do you need the best crop insurance in the area? If so, Hall Crop Insurance is here to help. Contact Agent Chad Hall at 419-576-6140 for all of your crop insurance needs. Underwriter Nikki Geisinger is also available to assist at 866-341. Test, one, two, three, test, 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 test. ...and their ability to serve their customers. If you need to talk to an agent or have questions about your policy, please give Chad or Nikki a call. All crop insurance wishes the best to all Tenora teams this season. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Looking for an auto body shop with highly skilled technicians and the most advanced equipment in the industry? Then Bat Stevens Body Shop is the right place for you. Bat Stevens will provide you a fine workmanship at a fair price. Our skilled professionals are committed to providing a quality and safe repair on every job like your life depends on it because it truly does. Bat Stevens is an iCar Gold Class Collision Repair Shop, ASE Blue Seal of Excellence Business, and the area's number one body shop voted on by Crescent News Readers. Located in downtown Jewel, Ohio, give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate today. Bat Stevens Body Shop says good luck to all Tenora Ram athletic teams and go Rams. Are you looking to build that nest egg for retirement or just looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience and can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, and other financial planning areas. Are you looking for home and auto insurance? Matthew French can assist in those areas. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure that your home, auto, or business is protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Quote at 419-438-0023. Visit them online at BidlackInsuranceFinancialServices.com or Facebook page. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wishes best of luck to all Tenora Rams athletes this season. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Garris for any of your sports needs at 419-576-8940. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Cut and Polished Salon owner Jenny Bidlack says, go Rams! 
Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street, right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Balmy Valley Title Agency of Defiance, which is all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Okie Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Oklahoma Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Oklahoma Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, ring up Brad, 419 419- Nine four eight one three seven three eight. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. The Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters is a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters' support is shown in many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the team or the organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. Visit them on Facebook at Tenora Athletic Boosters. The Law Office of Weider, Yoder, Hill, and Weber is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence, serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. We are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service. Each of our attorneys are committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Weiner, Danny Hill, Cam Staley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Call them at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at winnerlawoffice.com. The Law Office of Weiner, Yoder, Hill, and Weber is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Welcome in. Game number six of the Tenora Rams 2024 softball season coming up live here from Sonora High School. See Sonora Lady Rams hosting the Parkway Panthers in an early season non-conference showdown. Today's game is scheduled for a doubleheader. Game times are 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Sonora presents the GMC, the Green Medals Conference, while the Parkway Panthers represent the MAC, the Midwest Athletic Conference. Rams are 
coming in undefeated. They are five and zero, one and zero in conference play in the GMC, while Parkway enters at five and one. Overall standings in the GMC: Snorin and Paulding are on top at five and zero with the overall record. They are each one and zero. Fairview is five and one. Ayersville is two and one. They are also Fairview and Ayersville one and zero in the GMC. Edgerton is four and two, zero and one in the GMC. Antwerp and Wayne Trace are both two and one, zero and one in the GMC. And Hicksville is two and three. The aces are zero and one in the GMC. Games around the area today. Pilot invite over at Ayersville. Paulding's over there. Wayne Trace is over there. Obviously, Ayersville is over there. Fairview is at Van or taking on Van Wert. Hicksville and Delta and here, Sonora and Parkway with a scheduled doubleheader. Welcome to the Science Excavating pregame show. Science Excavating first pitch is set for 12 o'clock. Science Excavating offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Science Excavating can assist with your general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch clean to site prep, Science Excavating is here to assist. The Science Excavating team is to do the job right on schedule and within your budget. Based in rural defiance, the Science Excavating team serves all of Northwest Ohio, providing reliable and affordable excavating services for your home business or industrial property. Science Excavating offers full excavation and trucking services, which include stone hauling, trenching, demolition, land clearing, drainage work, and much, much more. Science Excavating is the official pregame sponsor of the Snorabs Live Winter Sports Season, well, actually spring sports season now. I always forget to change that. For all your excavating needs, get a hold of Josh, 419-769-2290. Heavy haul trucking engine call Brad 419 481 3738. Visit them on Facebook or scienceexcavating.com. Last season, the Rams finished overall at 20 and 8. They advanced to the regional finals where they were defeated by the Johnstown Johnnies. Rams finished second in the GMC with a 6 and 1 record. They finished one game behind GMC champion Fairview, who was actually in the same regional finals as the Lady Rams were. Rams graduated a Senior class of five, Anna Frazier, Paige Carpenter, Logan McQuillan, Devonna Holmes, and Marin Pittman. This season, Rams enter with another class of five seniors, Kaylee Lucas, Mickey Starkey, Keegan Norton, Tanae Smith, and Skylie Zolman. In the circle for the Lady Rams this season will be Skylie Zolman. Final season for Skylie in the Tenora Green and White before she moves on to another Green and White down at the University of Tiffin, where she will enroll in the fall. Skyly was a 2022 Player of the Year. It was also the Crescent News Player of the Year in 2022. Last year, Skyly was first team all GMC, 17 and 6, with an ERA of 1.13. This season, Skyly enters at 4 and 0. Oh. Freshman Zoe Billings looks to give later Rams a few innings. Zoe is 1 and 0 oh this season, had a win last week here versus Wasion. Lady Rams must replace few bats to plate the season. First team all GMC center field Anna Frazier, who is currently playing at Toledo, hit 510 with 32 steals. Second baseman, first team all GMC selection Logan McQuillan hit 485. First baseman Paige Carpenter, who was honorable mention all GMC, hit 386. Returning this season for Lady Rams, sophomore Paige Gamby is a freshman. Paige hit 435, seven home runs, 32 runs batted in. This season, she's hitting 467. She has five RBIs. And junior Zoe Rostai, who we're hopefully we can get Zoe back in a, about a month or so. She hit 299 last year, four home runs and 15 runs by then. Tegan Norton looks to re, uh, rebound this season. Thus far, this season, she has. She's hitting 471. Tanae Smith is headed to Goshen College next year. She's returning for her final season. She hits two. 78 this season. Freshman Madison Spangler and Zoe Billings looking to contribute as freshman right away. Spangler is hitting 571. Two home runs, four runs batted in. Billings with a home run and four runs batted in. Looking at the Parkway Panthers, they entered this season at 5-1. and one. Last year, the Panthers finished at 21-6. and six. They tied atop the MAC Conference at 6-1 and one with Minster. Parkway made it all the way to the Division four OHSAA state semifinals before losing to Hopewell Loudon nine to one in the final four. Panthers coming with a team batting average of 460. They average 12 runs a game. Emerly Temple leads the team in hitting at 588. Adria Miller second with a 571 average. Miller has 13 runs better than and Meg Hinkle leads the team with three home runs, 
and 16 runs batted in. Hinkle also is 4-1 in the circle this season. Parkway is coached by Trey Stover, four season for Coach Stover. He's 55-30, and 30, and Parkway is from Rockford, Ohio. Coach uh, uh, Stover is assisted by Brendan Bates. Superintendent is Janine Osterfeld. Principal is Brian Fortcamp. Athletic director is Terry Samples. They're from the MAC, the Midwest Athletic Conference, obviously known for their football. Colors are black, white, and old gold. They are Division Three this year. Last year, they are Division Four. 120 boy enrollment, 115 girls enrollment. Rams are coached by head coach Tony Fairchild, third season. Overall record of 43 and 12. He was a 2022 Crescent News Coach of the Year. His managers are Ellis DeHulik and Ava Kahoot. Coach Fairchild is assisted by Ellie Furlan and Taylor Murphy, Brian Schaffner, and Vince Salinas. Superintendent at Northeastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. Your principal is Alex Nafsteger. Athletic Director, Mr. Jake Essig. Rams trainer is Emily Volmar. Rams team colors are Hunter Green and White. They are from the GMC, the Green Medals Conference. They are Division Three, Total enrollment of 147 boys, 127 girls. So wherever you are, however you may, however you may be listening, thanks for tuning in to today's games, plural. Two games today, live from Tenora High School. We'll see Tenora Rams taking on the Parkway Panthers in a Saturday doubleheader. Broadcast booth brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Pre-game brought to you by Signs Excavating. Video sponsor, Batten Stevens Body Shop in Jewel, Ohio. Strikeouts, courtesy of Hall Crop Insurance Pitching Change, courtesy of Prosperity Painting. And each Nor Ram run is brought to you by Oklahoma Tavern. Ram Stolen Bases brought to you by Clubhouse Pizza and A. Home runs, which there could be a few today with the wind blowing out, brought to you by Aftershocks, Carts, and Equipment. Your post-game show brought to you by Bidlack, Insurance and Investments. Player of the game and a Ram win is brought to you by Higby Embroidery. Uniform colors, Rams in the hunter green tops with the black pants. White numbers and gray trim where Parkway is in the white uniform tops, black sleeves, black numbers and lettering, and black pants. We'll pause for the playing of our national anthem. Is the playing of our national anthem finishing up our post game show? Signs us committing or post game pre game show on your David Frank weather here at Sonora High School. It's sunny and 55, not a cloud in the sky, wind gusting from left to right about 20 miles an hour plus. I think that's a given. I don't really think we need to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's every day, no matter what. every day at Sonora High School, like we said. 15 miles an hour, men on the wind. Just a staple now. Obviously, <laughs> yes. Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you on game one here. As we did last week, I'll bring you game one, and Kaylee will bring you game two. A decent crowd here for a noon start. Parkway, about a 
Hour Plus Drive down south, more known for their football in that area, in the MAC conference. But we're here for spring. And softball. Last year, Parkway made it to the Division Four Final Four and lost in the state semifinals. So quite a year last year for the Parkway Panthers and their program. Well, the Lady Rams were just one win away from going to the state final four in Division Three last season. We should see a <clears throat> should see a good game here, Chen. On the mound for the Rams, Skyly's Olman. Skyly's four and one this season. ERA of one point six two. She struck out forty and walked just four this season. Fantastic control early on for Skyly. She's given up twenty one hits. Leading off is. Brittany Burns for Parkway. First pitch. High and outside. We're underway here at Sonora High School. 12 o'clock, 55 degrees on the first pitch. Burns hitting 520 this season. Has a home run, six runs batted in. Second pitch is a little bit high and away. Ball two. Madison Louth will play in the center field. Awaits on deck. We'll run down the Rams defense here in a split second. Swung on and missed. Zolman on the in the circle can be behind the plate. Billings at first, Cobra at second, Nord at short, and Tanae Smith at third. Outfield, Katie Lukitz in left, Madison Smangler in center, and Christina Meyer in right. 2-1 pitch, strike two called. The leadoff hitter, Brittany Burns. Or Bruns, my apology, Brittany Bruns. 2-2 pitch to Bruns is fouled. On the right side, out of play. Count stays two and two. Sometimes I can't read my own writing. That little boy out there running for that ball. His arms are just a flaring. <laughs> <He's trying to laughs> running run into the it. wind. <laughs> two and two pitch, a bit outside. Count goes full to the Panthers leadoff hitter, Brittany Bruns. Parkway's hitting 460 as a team, and they average close to 12 runs a contest. Nolan's 3-2 to Brun. Swung on. Hit almost in the same spot. Foul down the right side. Out of play. <clears throat> Coach Fairchild's digging out the balls already from the dugout. Hit right back to Skyly. One hopper fires over to first for the out. One three on the put out for the first out. Runs hit it hard right back at Zolman. Yeah, their horn cups back out here again today. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> last last week, me and Kaylee were wondering for the first, first game and a half, where the heck is this sound coming from when we had the big <laughs> Eisenhart track meet next door? We thought it was from the track meet. No, it's just some goofy cup with a... <laughs> A duck sound on top. <laughs> Number two hitter is Madison Louth. She's in center field. 667 for Louth this season. Swung on, slapped foul, third base side. Zolman quickly ahead of Louth. No balls and two strikes. Last year, Louth hit 510. Had 20 RBIs and 14 stolen bases. Big Hinkle on deck for Parkway. 0-2 pitch stays a little bit outside. A ball and two strikes. Base is empty. No score just underway here at Sonora High School. Louth bats from the left side. Solomon's 1-2. Slap. Shortstop side. Nord up with it. Fires over in time to get to speedy Louth. Nice play by Tegan. Yeah, those are the ones where it wasn't quite coming in like hard enough for... Jordan to kind of need to run in on it, and especially with her being a lefty, run in on it and make that quick throw over to first. Stop again, the number three hitter, Meg Hinkle. Hinkle will be on the mound. She's hitting 524 this season, three home runs and 16 runs batted in. First pitch is a ball. Last year, Hinkle hit 419 with two homers and 40 runs batted in. 
Zolman's 1-0 to Henkel. Swung on. High pop. Right side. Lands out of play. Oh, boy's going to get all those foul balls. <laughs> he might as well just stay out there. <laughs> <laughs> About three of them so far. Through the first three batters. He's going to get his work in uh, here today. One ball, one strike to Henkel. Paige Stevenson awaits on deck. <laughs> One one pitch swung on and miss. Skyly's head of Hinkle. One ball and two strikes. Last year, Parkway lost to Hope all out nine to one in the state semifinals. One two pitch swung on and miss. Down goes Hinkle. First strikeout for Skyly. Parkway goes in order in the first inning. No runs, no hits, no Lady Ram errors, no Parkway Panthers left on base. After half inning in play here at Sonora High School, it is Parkway nothing, and the Sonora Lady Rams coming to bat on your drop zone beat area scoreboard. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Garris for any of your sports needs at 419-576-8940. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Tenora High School, Keith Brown, Kayla Runk with you on a Saturday afternoon. For the Rams, Christina Meyer, Tanae Smith, and Tegan Norton will be the first three to bat against Meg Hinkle. Defensively for the Parkway Panthers, Hinkle on the mound, Abby Taylor behind the plate, Paige Stevenson at first, Adria Miller at second, Brittany Bruns at short, Emory Temple at third, outfield and left field is Avery White, Madison Louth in center, and Aubrey Nichols in right field. On the mound is Meg Hinkle. She's four and one. 21 in the third innings pitch, 24 hits, 18 runs allowed, 17 earned runs. She's walked nine, struck out 17. ERA this season, 5.88. Last year, she was 18 and 5. 114 in the third innings pitched in 24 games allowed, or had an ERA of 2.44. She had 83 strikeouts and 72 walks last season. Christina Meyer steps in, 438 for Christina. One RBI and three stolen bases. Hinkle in the circle, first pitch. Meyer swings, pops it, first base side, out of play. And that's the fourth one to go over there in that same exact spot. It's nice and wet over there, too, right in that <laughs> ditch. <laughs> Little kid's going to need to change his shoes, socks, and clothes before he leaves. <laughs> going to be soaked. Pickles all one to Christina Meyer, high and away. Count evens at a ball and a strike. No activity in the baseball field, which is odd. You usually have a JV game. I know the varsity boys are down south at St. Henry playing in the tournament last night and today. 1 1 pitch to Meyer. Swinging bunt, third base side, picked up by the catcher, Taylor. She almost tripped there on the yes, she did. <laughs> So Christina Meyer reaches with a unintentional bunt single. I think she swung, actually. Yeah, she swung and just nubbed it into the soft ground here. And they're going to go out there and see. I don't really know what they're questioning. I don't know if they're. Yeah, they, uh, they thought it hit her. Out of the batter's box, yes. I don't know, she Which I didn't see that. I couldn't see we're, we're it like where a, it actually hit. We're looking through a mesh fence here. So I'm going to bring up Tanae Smith with the runner at first base. <laughs> 278 for Tanae. She's got three runs batted in this season. Rams as a team batting 377. Lined into right field between first and second. Stopping at second is Christina Meyer because Aubrey Nichols fired a rocket in right behind her. But Tanae Smith with the line shot in the right field right between Miller and Stevenson. That's going to bring up the number three hitter. Tegan Norton, Norgan at shortstop, 471 this year with three runs batted in. First pitch, change up, stays 
outside. Ball one, Tegan having a rebound season last year. We said Tegan struggled last year, hit 195 at the plate. Played great defensively. She was frustrated at the plate most of the season. Hinkle's 1-0 pitch coming to Norton. Swung on, fouled off, first base side out of play. Rams have runners at first and second. Nobody out here in the top of the first inning. One ball, one strike to Tegan Norton. Hinkle in the circle here, 1-1. One, one. A little soft liner, third base side. Emory Temple comes on to squeeze it for out number one, retiring Norton. Inside pitch hit Tegan in on the handle there, and she popped up to the third baseman. It's going to bring up Paige Gamby, the number four hitter. Gamby behind the plate in game one, 467 for Gamby. Still looking for her first home run this season after hitting seven last year. First pitch swinging, lines it in the center field right in front of Wow. That's going to load him up. That dropped just right where she needed it, too. Meyer had to hold on to make sure that wasn't going to be caught out there, but Gamby with the third single here in the first loads him up for Skyly Zolman. Skyly, number five hitter, 571 this season with three homers and eight runs batted in. She can help herself here. Bases full, Lady Rams, one out. Hinkle's first pitch just missed on the inside corner. One ball and no strikes. Infield, first and third, playing about two or three feet inside of the base path. Outfield straight up. Or actually, center field a little bit shaded to the left yeah, for especially, Skyly. Especially with that wind. Rocket down the line. Left field. That's going to score Meyer. Here comes Smith for one, two. Two RBI double for Skyly Zolman, who just roped it down the right field line. <laughs> like Duck Dynasty. <laughs> That's so funny. Start getting duck calls. So the Lady Rams have runners at second and third. Gamby's at third. Zolman's at first. Madison Spangler steps in. Madison, 571 as a freshman. Two homers and four runs batted in. Tinkles pitch inside off the glove of Taylor. Doesn't go too far. She scoops it up. Gamby stays at third. Madison is about three inches away from another home run at Defiance at the very top of the fence a couple weeks ago there at Defiance. Tinkles 1-0 coming to Spangler. Swung on high fly ball to the right center field. Center fielder out there, Louth, makes the catch. Tagging. And scoring from third is Paige Gamby, the Rams' third run of the innings. Play Rams lead 3-0. Tagging up and going to third was Zolman. So Spangler with the sacrifice fly and an RBI. The second out. Going to bring up Zoe Billings. Billings will be at first base. She hits the number seven spot for Coach Fairchild. 214 for Zoe, a homer, and four runs batted in. First pitch to her is a strike called. Meg Hinkle's 0-1 pitch coming to Billings. Swung on, drilled into the Lady Rams dugout. Ricochets off the safety fence in front of the dugout down the left field line. No balls and two strikes to Zoe Billings. Mickey Starkey on deck for the Lady Rams. All those runs brought to you by Oklahoma Tavern. Hinkle's 0-2 pitch to Billings. She fouls it off. Out of play. Count stays. No balls and two strikes. Skyly Zolman is at third. Coach Furlan coaching at first. Coach Fairchild coaching at third. 0-2 pitch. Zoe skips out of the way. Ball one. One ball and two strikes to the freshman. Two very good-looking freshmen for Coach Fairchild. Spangler and Billings. Back-to-back -back in the order. One-two 
one two pitch coming to Hinkle or from Hinkle to Billings. Swung on skied in foul territory. That's going to wind up in fair territory. The wind caught it and it hits right in the circle. So they were all kind of looking around. I don't think they really knew nobody where actually it was going. called it. It went straight up the. The ca- I don't know shoot. where the catcher went. I mean, the pitcher was like over by first. The catcher was looking. The third baseman was looking. <laughs> So scoring is Skyly from third. That's going to be an RBI single from for Zoe Billings. I'm guessing it's one of those. It got to a point where the sun probably they couldn't see it, and then the wind took it. Going to bring up Mickey Starkey. Starkey 364 this young season. She is the designated player. They were watching pregame warmups, and the ball was moving about 10 feet due to the wind, and we just saw it right there. First pitch is a ball. Second pitch, also a ball inside. Starkey ahead. Two balls and no strikes. Runner at first. Two outs for the Lady Rams. This is an eighth header to bat in the order. Check swing. Strike called on the inside corner. Two balls and a strike to Mickey Starkey. Trinity Corber on deck for Tenora. one pitch coming from Hinkle to Starkey. Swung on and miss. Nice change up there for Meg Hinkle. Senior Hinkle. Number of six seniors on the Parkway Panthers team. 2-2 pitch. Swung on and miss for strike num- strikeout. And the third out for the Rams. They send eight to the plate. They score four runs. They do so with five hits, no errors, and they leave one. Top of the second we go here at Tenora High School. It is Tenora Lady Rams four and the Parkway Panthers nothing on your drop zone. Pete Sarias scoreboard. Are you planning an upcoming event, big or small, breakfast, lunch, or supper? Brothers Tacos and Defiance has family recipes from generations that we can't wait to share with you. Hosting a public event? Brother Tacos is an authentic Mexican food vendor here to assist. We invite anyone in Defiance or the surrounding areas to check us out on our Facebook page, Google, or our new website, 567-344-0055. Brother Taco in Defiance is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams Live. Back at Tenora High School, Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk with you. Lee Rams with a four spot in the bottom of the first inning. They lead 4 nothing as Parkway. Comes to bat. Three, four, and five for Parkway. Stepping in, Paige Stevenson. She immediately lines up foul down the first base side. Stevenson, Miller, and Temple to bat against Zolman. Six fifty-two for Stevenson. She has two homers and thirteen runs batted in. Pitch was a ball. Ball one and strike one. Base is empty. No outs here in the. Top of inning number two. Swung on a little soft pop to the first baseman. Zoe Billings snags it for out number one. Saying what Zoe did right there, she called off second base. She put her hand out and called it. Like that's 100% what you had to do right there to avoid those collisions and those mistakes. Absolutely. Call it out. Just something Parkway did not do. At least we don't think they did in the first <laughs> inning. Adrian Miller, the second baseman, steps in. 571, two homers, 13 runs for Miller. First pitch is a ball. On deck is Emery Temple for Parkway. Holman's 1 0. Strike called. Very good early season contest between these two very good softball programs. We said Parkway went to the final four last year. And Snore went to the final eight. Little tapper foul. One ball and two strikes to Miller. Parkway up a division this year will be division three. Last year they went to the state final four and division four. Dolman's one, two coming to Miller. Little tapper first base side. Up comes Billings, throws it wide and by. Corber, who was covering, but backed up nicely out there by Corber was trying to not collide with the runner, but at the same time, I think she, I don't know, what is that first base? It looks, it's slippery. Yes. <laughs> she kind of slipped on it a little bit as well. 
Kaylee Lucas out there. Coach Fairchild, give me line that said that Christina Meyer was out there. The pitch has fouled off. Yeah, it does say. She's in so, right Christ, field. so Christina's <laughs> in, in, left field. in left field. Oh, one pitch swung on, fouled off. No balls and two strikes now. One out. <laughs> Top of the first inning, Parkway. What they run her at first. Emory Temple, 588 with five runs batted in the season. I think Miller would have beat that out regardless of the throw. Pitch is off the glove of Gamby to the backstop. It goes. Miller moves up on the wild pitch. He sees a second with one out. Got on Temple is one ball and one strike. Okay. Swung on and missed. Oh, well, I guess it was yeah, so she had two, plus strike, so strike three, three then. My bad. So she struck out swinging. That's out number two. That's a bad job by me. Stopping in the number seven hitter, Avery Taylor. Taylor, 350 with nine RBIs. She's the catcher. Two outs now with the runner at second. Miller down there for Parkway. They trail 4 nothing as they bat here in the top of inning number two. Zolman Zol one. Just Ooh. missed. Not quite sure how that one missed. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe Just a little barely high. missed. High, high and away, I guess. A ball on the strike. Two outs to Taylor. Someone on tap right back to Skyly. She fields on a one hop. Fires over to Billings for out number three. One three on the put out for Parkway. No runs. They get a hit. No leader Ram errors, and the Panthers leave one. Bottom of the second inning we go here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Lady Rams four and Parkway nothing. The law office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Tenora High School, 4 nothing, Lady Rams. Keith Brown, Kaylee Rick back here on this beautiful but windy Saturday afternoon here at the Tenora Softball Complex. Very quiet compared to last Saturday where he literally, when I left last week, Kaylee, I could not believe the amount of cars that were were oh, here. I know, I know. They were parked all the way down <laughs> they had a line to down the Sean's and Nicole's house. And I don't know how far they went down Banner School, but the entire campus was full of cars and they could, every square inch that you could fit a car, there was a car. Grass, pond. Anywhere, I think they parked in the pond, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> After everyone left, you, I mean, you could see where everyone was parking in the grass. I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> Rams are going to send up 9-1-2. and two. Trinity Korber, Christina Meyer, and Tanae Smith to face Meg Henkel. First pitch is swung on and missed to Trinity Korber. Korber, 111 this early season with a run batted in. Swung on, fouled off, first base side out of play. Henkel quickly hit a corbel. Corber, no balls and two strikes. My brother sent me a message asking for a plane today. I'm like, yes, we have a double header. Get on out of here. No balls and two strikes. Ooh, oh, it sounded like it hurt. Corber right in the shin, and she drops down the first base like a trooper, but that's going to hurt here in a little bit. She's going to feel that one later. <laughs> or in about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I heard that from a Oh, she's rubbing it now. I'll leave a, I'll leave a Emily, nice, I'm nice a, I don't think, I don't know if Emily's here or not, but she better get the ice <laughs> because that thing's going to swell up by the time she gets back to the dugout. 
Top of the line with Chris Dima- Christina Meyer singled and scored in the Rams' four-run first inning. Christina came in batting 438. First pitch to her is foul back. Strike one. Meyer up. RBI and three stolen bases this season. Thrower comes in at five and one. Parkway comes in at or Thrower comes in at five and zero. Oh. Parkway comes in at five and one. Hickle comes set. Pitch is outside. Throw down to first base. Meyer dove back in. And one thing about the heavy rains we got the last couple of days, you're not going to actually go too far when you dive yeah, or slide. Yeah. You're just pretty much going to stick where you're at. Yeah, there's not much give on the field right great now. Great job, though, by Coach Fairchild and, and Vince and the crew. They did a great job to get this field ready for play. One ball, one strike pitch is inside. Strike two to the Rams leadoff hitter. Left fielder, Christina Meyer. Coach Fairchild gave me an invalid lineup, apparently. <laughs> One two pitch coming to Meyer. Swung on little dribbler, side. third base side, fielded by Temple. She fires over to second base to Miller to get the force out for out number one. Hey, Janae, base hit. Five four on the put out. So, so Meyer replaces Corber at first, and she just wants to go in and get some. I saw her leg, I'm assuming, real quick, if they could. They'll bring up Tanae Smith. Throw down the first base. Head first dive is Christina Meyer. Smith singled and scored in the first inning for Tenora. Today, 278 this season with three runs batted in. Finkel gets inside and her 1-0 pitch coming to Tanae Smith. Outside. Two balls and no strikes due today. Throwback got away. Nice backup by Brittany Bruns. Tegan Norton on deck for Tenora. 2 0 pitch to Tanay. Strike called. Two balls and a strike to Rams third baseman Tanay Smith. Tanay headed to Goshen College next season. Today sends it deep right field. That's going to be a home run. Tanae Smith, opposite field. Two-run home run. Puts the Lady Rams up 6 nothing. And there was no doubt about that, Kaylee. I think even that right fielder knew. She stuck her glove up and then just put her right back down. <laughs> wind or no wind, that was going to head out for today. So. Congratulations to Tanae Smith, her first home run of the season. Yeah, ball's coming in from a little bit everywhere here now. Six nothing, Lady Rams. Just one out here in the bottom of the second. Head coach. Looks like they're going to swap pitchers here. Trey Stover out there. Going to make a pitching change as Kaylee said and we'll be back and try and get everything reset and we'll do it right after this here on Tenor Rams Live. Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard 6 nothing, Lady Rams. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call, 419-784-9880, or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com, or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say, go Rams! 
The Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters is a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters support is shown in many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the team or the organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. Visit them on Facebook at Tenora Athletic Boosters. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here at Tenora High School, it's 4 0 Lady Rams. Ray Shane Webbin on in place of Meg Hinkle with one out here in the bottom of the second. And for Shane Levin, she's pitched 12 and two thirds innings. She's appeared in five games. She started one. She is 1 0. She's allowed 13 hits in those 12 innings. Seven runs, five earned runs. She struck out eight and walked three. Shane Levin has an ERA this season of 2.76. She's also a lefty. Which know. is what you don't see too much no, you don't see it that often. In, in girls softball. So this will be intriguing to say the least, Kaylee. That's one of those things. It's not like it's not a thing. You just don't see a lot of it. So Shane Levin on in relief after that Tanae Smith two-run home run. And we said there was no doubt about Tanae's opposite field home run. Yeah, that wind, uh, wind definitely took that. <laughs> Tegan Norton's going to step in. Tegan popped out in the first. 471 coming in for Tegan. Coach Fairchild's over there getting the changes from the Umpire, so Coach Schaffner can put those in the game changer, which is one of those things that game changer is awesome until it comes time to change in like six people. <laughs> I was going to actually do that last in between the last inning and bring up the game changer because I like to keep track of pitches and strikes and. All that nerdy stat stuff. But Parkway does not have it live. And I'm pretty sure that Coach Fairchild, they have it, but they don't score it live either. So we won't have any of the nerdy stuff for everybody today. Sorry about that. <laughs> So those people down here have those rocking chairs, and they're squeaking. And that's yes, all they I, are. That's all I can hear. <laughs> Squeak. That's like somebody eating popcorn in a quiet theater. <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch. All you hear is popcorn eating. I heard it at first, <laughs> and I started looking. I was like, okay, where are the chairs? Yeah, there's no <laughs> swings. I mean, they are, but they're way over there. So, Tegan Jordan steps in. Base is empty. One out here in the bottom of the second. Lady Rams up 6 nothing. Shane Levin's first pitch fouled off. I was going to say, there's Third three base of them going side. And they were running. <laughs> I think they all learned after the pop-up in the first inning that uh, just converge and somebody call it, and the wind's going to bring it back to you. No balls on a strike to Tegan Norton. Shane Levin in the circle. Her pitch. Drilled into left field. Coming on to make a great catch is Avery White to steal a single from Tegan Norton. Wow. It was a nice hit. I mean, there's nothing nothing wrong with it. I mean, yep. Yeah, you can't shake really your get, head you and can't really get mad you at tip it. your cap to the left fielder and say, nice play. Don't bring up Paige Gamby. She singled and scored in the first. First pitch to Paige, a strike one called. Paige hit one up in the silo here in the first inning that landed in the circle. And the wind brought her back from foul territory all the way to the circle. And nobody called it out and just landed there. Page drills it past Coach Fairchild. Foul. That one was just a little high. Amy behind. No balls and two strikes. That's where Paige hits her, hits her best, I think, is down in the count. I think she likes the pressure a little yes, bit. Yes, she does. <laughs> Fantastic freshman year for Paige last season. 
Swan on hits second base side. Miller up with it. Throws over to first base for the out. Retiring Gamby. 4-3 on the put out. For Tenora, they get two more runs here in the second. They do so on the Tanae Smith two-run home run. Nobody left on base and no Parkway errors. Top of the third inning we go here from Tenora High School. Lady Rams six and Parkway nothing on your Trap Zone Pizza Rhea scoreboard. Are you planning an upcoming event, big or small, breakfast, lunch, or supper? Brothers Tacos and Defiance has family recipes from generations that we can't wait to share with you. Hosting a public event? Brother Tacos is an authentic Mexican food vendor here to assist. We invite anyone in Defiance or the surrounding areas to check us out on our Facebook page, Google, or our new website, 567-344-0055. Brother Taco and Defiance is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams Live. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events, broadcast on YouTube, and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Top of the third we go, Keith Brown and Kayla Ruck here at Tenora High School for the visiting Parkway Panthers. They're going to send up 8-9-1 and one to face Skyly Zoman. Kelly Bullenbacher, Avery White into the top. Brittany Bruns to face Skyly Zoman. First pitch drilled to left field. That's going to fall in front of Christina Meyer for a leadoff single for the Parkway Panthers. So Bullenbacher starts things off for Parkway. Here in the third, bring up number nine hitter Avery White. White swings, drills it into right center field. Madison Spangler playing way over her. Positions perfectly it snags it. Especially with that wind. I mean, it's definitely smart to play over that way. That's where it's going to take them. I think that was Avery White's first appearance of the season for everything I could find. Top of the lineup, Brittany Bruns. Grounded back to Skyly, her first plate appearance. First pitch is outside, ball one. Runs 520 with a homer and six runs batted in coming in. Runner at first. Bullenbacher. Pitch fouled off first base side. Watch the fence. And <laughs> Zoe Billings over there watches it sail over the fence. We saw one of the Wasian girls do that last week. She hit that hard. <laughs> she lost track of the ball and ran full speed into the fence by the dugout. One ball and a strike to Brun. Every time I see him running over that way, I guess when everybody's like, I can knock the wind out of you. <laughs> I think it did last week, that poor girl. She needs a couple seconds to gather herself. Someone's 1 1. Swung on. This one's lying. Ow. Way over the Little fence. Little boy's on it again. He's, a, he's got a glove now. Like, he's over there. He's, <laughs> he's, he's ready. Waiting for he's him. ready. He's like, Mom, good thing I brought my glove. <laughs> Came prepared. <laughs> One-two pitch from Skyly to Bruns. Little looper in the right field. That's going to fall in front of Lucas for a base hit. So Bruns with a one-out single puts runners at first and second. Bullenbacher stopped at second. Number three hitter, Madison, or the number two hitter, Madison Louth steps in. Louth in the center field, 667 coming in. She grounded out to Tegan Norton in the first. She bats from the left side. Spangler's going to run over and cover that other side there of center field. She tried to slap it down the third base side and bunts it foul. Strike one. Ankle on deck for Parkway. 6 nothing, Lady Rams here in the top of the third in a scheduled double header today. Picked a great day for that. Oh, well, we had a good day, a good week last Saturday, too, when the Rams played while she's on a doubleheader. A one pitch just misses. Count evens at a ball and a strike. One out. Parkway with runners at first and second. They trail by six here in the top of the third. I've been trying to kind of figure out his zone a little bit, but he's a little all over the place. <laughs> Bunch this one to Tanae Smith. Tanae scoops it up, beats the runner to third for the force out. Nice heads, play, heads up play there by Tanae. 
So that's a fielder's choice for out number two. Louth will be at first. Down to second goes Bruns. And Bollenbacher is out number two on the fielder's choice. So Hinkle steps in. 524 with three homers and 16 runs bad. And she struck out in the first. First pitch is a ball to Meg Hinkle. Hinkle started the game on the mound and is replaced last inning by. She drills it right at nice Christina catch. Meyer. Nice. Meyer couple steps in, snags it. Nice play by Christina Meyer out there in left field. So for Hinkle, she nails it right on the head, unfortunately. Hit it right at Christina Meyer. So for Parkway, they threaten. They do not score. No runs for Parkway. They do have two hits in the inning. No Lady Ram errors and two left on base to the bottom of the third inning we go here at Sonora High School. It is Parkway and the Lady Rams. Lady Rams lead 6 0 here on your drop zone pizza Rhea scoreboard. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroidery is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back here at Tenora High School, bottom of the third we go. Zolman, Spangler, and Billings to face Shane Webbin. As you're going to hear the wind whip around in our crowd mic we have below us here at the Tenora Softball Complex. Shade Levin, a sophomore. No balls and one strike to Skyly Zolman. Drills it deep center field. Go, go, go. Back, back. Back, gone, oh, straight the, away center field, over the sign. right over the 2018 Final Four sign for a solo home run. A little harder, she might have went into the solo panels there. <laughs> and close. So Zolan gives the Lady Rams a 7 nothing lead for Skyly. That's her fourth home run. And... Her third RBI of the day. She now has four homers and 11 RBI. She came in hitting 571. So she is probably close to the 600 mark for the season. Madison Spangler. Spangler with a sacrifice and an RBI in the first. Sacrifice fly for Madison. First pitches. Ball one. Shane Levin's pitch, one on and miss. One ball and a strike to Madison Spangler. Spangler, 571, two homers, four runs batted in. Well, actually, she has five runs batted in now. One ball, one strike. Drilled left oh, center field, might. back it goes. Over That's again. gone. Madison Spangler with an absolute rocket. Back-to-back -back home run. Zolman and now Spangler have given the Lady Rams an 8 nothing lead over Parkway. I went out to get Skyly's ball. Might have stayed out there. There he goes. He's going back to get it. <laughs> He's jogging this time. Probably because we're running out of balls. <laughs> got a guy out there in center. We got a kid over here. He's looking, and... looking for it. I'm not sure. That one must have went way out that there. That one, I say. He's out in the field. That grass out there, it's not going to... It's going to... Take a little bit to find it. It's probably wet out there, too. Oh, it's probably a muddy mess out there. He, he still can't find it. <laughs> See, it went to the right of it. He's, he went past it. That's going to bring up Zoe Billings. Billings with an RBI single in the first. first. Oh. oh, he got it. <laughs> hey, we <he> found it. <laughs> the lefty, Shane Levin. First pitch to Billings. Up and in. Two balls and no strikes. 
Bases empty. Nobody out here in the bottom of the third. Lady Rams up 8 nothing. Shane Lubbins 2-0 pitch to Billings as she gets back in the circle. Swung on, hit shortstop side. Runs up with it, fires across so for the out to rely. Nice throw from their shortstop. Nice, she, nice arm. She put some speed on that one. Well, that's the first out of the inning. Mickey Starkey, the number eight hitter, steps in. Starkey struck out in the first inning. Rams sent eight to bat in the first. Scored four runs off the starter. Meg Hinkle. Pitches fouled off first base side out of play. Trinity Corber on deck or Tenora. Game one of two. Game two is scheduled to start at 12, 2 o'clock. Get on out here. Beautiful day for softball. Two very good softball programs out here. Swung on, lined right at the second baseman. Miller scoops it right off the dirt for out number two to retire Starkey. But as we said earlier in the signs excavating pregame, and probably early on that last year in Division Four, Parkway went to the Final Four. And Lady Rams, unfortunately, were one victory away from going to the Final Four in Division Three. Mickey Star or Trinity Corber steps in. She was hit by a pitch in the second. Lady Rams were about three inches away from tying that uh, regional semifinal up off the bat of Tegan Norton. They're in the Opposite field, fly ball, it goes out there to Aubrey Nichols for Parkway and Corbers, out number three. For Tenora, lots of fireworks here in the third. They get two runs on back-to-back -back homers by Zolman and Spangler. Rams, those two hits, no Parkway errors, and Tenora does not leave anybody on base. Top of the fourth inning we go here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Lee Rams 8 and Parkway nothing. We'll be back right after this here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Oklahoma Tavern, located in downtown Oklahoma, is the home of the famous Okie Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy an ice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening 4 p.m. Check out the Oklahoma Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Oklahoma Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back here at Tenora High School, Keith Round, Kaylee Runk with you on this Saturday. Lady Rams up 8-0 over the Parkway Panthers in game one of a scheduled doubleheader. First pitch, check swing to the number four hitter, Paige Stevenson. Stevenson popped out to Zoe Billings at first base. Stevenson, Miller, and Temple to face Skyly Zolman. Strike two called. So Skyly quickly hit a Stevenson. No balls and two strikes. So a little fun fact here that I've noticed. Um, all of their bats have blue in them. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> yeah. I was kind of like, I mean, the, whoever is on deck, like it's all blue. Like I like the color, but I got to notice every single one of their bats have some form of blue in them. <laughs> we darn. One ball and two strikes now to Stevenson. She's hitting 652 this season. Taps it. One hop to third base to Tanae Smith. High throw. Nice ball there by Zoe Billings to snag it. Tanae's played a very good third base here in game one. 6-3 on the putout for out number one. I've got like a six-week tickle cough. I just can't shake. The more I talk, this pops up out of nowhere. Oh, that might get us. First pitch to Miller, fouled back, and it somehow missed us. We haven't had one for say, oh, a couple think... couple games. <laughs> I don't have we've whole, had one yet. <laughs> whole hole in the roof this year. <laughs> or a safety is up yeah. there or something. They put a net over top of us. No balls and a strike to Adria Miller. She's playing at second base. She went, uh, she went a little golfing for that one. <laughs> she uh, definitely gave that one to Skyly. <laughs> No balls and two strikes to Miller. 
Shot in the center field. Up comes Spangler to snitter it for out number two. Rams with spectacular defense here in game number one. Their position exactly right. It's going to bring up number six hitter, Emery Temple. Temple struck out in the second. It's ball one. Skyly let the defense do the work today. Skyly with just yeah. two strikeouts, but hey, if you got defense like this out there, yeah. put them to work. They're going to back you up, then let them do it. 1 0 pitch stays inside. Two balls and no strikes. Avery Taylor on deck for Parkway. Tap through the box by Zolman, scooped up by over the shortstop. Over Tegan Norton fires over to first off the glove of Zoe Billings into the dugout goes. So I couldn't see where it went. I couldn't tell if it went just on the other side of the dugout, but it did go in. Error on the play, allowing the runner to reach second, actually, now. Here we go. Avery Taylor grounded back to Skyly in the second. First pitch, nice scoop up there by Paige Camby. 8 nothing. Lady Rams here in the top of the fourth. one no pitch coming to Taylor. Fouled off first base side. That kid out there with his glove. Oh, he's, he's trying. He didn't get it. Yeah, he hesitated. <laughs> he would have kept going. Yeah, he might have got he, it. should have went. You're like, where's that mud puddle at? The size of his glove. I'm not sure the ball will fit in it. He's got a little tiny glove. <laughs> yeah, a little baby ball glove there. 1-1 one, one pitch to Taylor. Checks wing. Stays a little bit high. Two balls and a strike. Runner a second for Parkway. Two out. They trail by eight here in the fourth. Oh, he's learning his lesson. He's playing a little bit deeper now. He's just literally out here <laughs> waiting for it. 2-1 <laughs> pitch. Tap. Third base side, fair ball. Tanae Smith can't do anything about it. Has to hold it. She fires back to Norton, covering third. But the runner, Bruns, stays put at third. They're not Bruns. That was uh, Temple. So Temple is on at third. The infield single by Avery Taylor. It's going to bring up number eight hitter. Kelly Bullenbach, first pitch, fouled back, and it hit the pole for the netting here. First time I've ever seen that, actually. So Kelly Bullenbacher, runners at first and third for Parkway, two outs. Avery White on deck. Bullenbacher singled in the third. Oh, one pitch from Skyly, a little bit low. One ball and one strike. So she pitches left, but she's batting righty. You don't see that very often, no, I, honestly. Like, I double looked, and I was like, that's that's the pitcher. Like, yes. <laughs> and then. Tap, shortstop side, oh. Norton in front of a bobbles that can't make a play. So Shane Levin reaches. That allows... Temple to score from third. First run for Parkway. Stopping at second was Taylor. Actually, that was Shane Levin that hit for Bullenbacher. So Parkway was well, some two out noise here. Cut the Rams lead to eight to one. Runners at first and second for the Panthers. Skyly's first pitch to Avery White. It's a little bit low and outside. Ball one. One zero pitch strike called. He was accounted a ball and a strike. Coach Trey Stover down there clapping words of enthusiasm. 
One one pitch stays high. Two balls and a strike. Dolman's pitch, swung on and missed. Strike two. Two strikes, two on. Skyley's pitch. Fouled off first base side. Out of play. Kaylee Lucas over there. Throws it back in. Gamby behind the plate. Billings at first. Corber at second. Norton at short. Tanae Smith at third. Meyer in left. Spangler in center. And Lucas in left. For Tenor defensively. Swung on and fouled right back at Kaylee. <laughs> I flinched still. <laughs> like, even, like, I know it's not coming in here. Like, naturally. Just out of habit. Just yeah. <laughs> One, two pitch from Zolman. Nice. Change up. Change up. Oh, Tapper, third base side. Tanae Smith on with it. The first, not in time. That's an infield single for Avery. That's going to load him up. Taylor down to third. Chain 11 down to second. And on at first is Avery White. All of this with two outs. First two batters were retired. Stevenson and Miller. Top of the lineup. Brittany Brun steps in. First pitch, outside corner. Strike called. Bruns. In the first inning, hit a bouncer back to Skyly, and she singled in the third. Hit second base side. Trinity Corber over there. That was a rocket on the ground. And Corber fielded cleanly, fired over to first for the final out. 4-3. On the put out for out number three, but in the inning for Parkway, they finally get on the board. They get a run. Let me tell you up their hits here. They got three hits and they leave three. They leave them loaded. Bottom of the fourth, we go here at Sonora High School. Lady Rams eight and Parkway one. We'll be back right after this here on Sonora Rams Live. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events, broadcast on YouTube, and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Bottom of the fourth we go. Keith Brown, Kaylee Runk, back with you here at Tenora High School. Lady Rams up. 8-1. Parkway threatened to get more in that final at bat. Finally played their first run. Had the bases loaded. And nice play out there by Rams second baseman Trinity Corber to feel, feel that hard ground ball off the bat of Brittany Bruns. For the third out. Fort Sonora, top of the lineup. One, two, and three. Christina Meyer, Tanae Smith, and Tegan Norton to face three Shane Levin. First pitch to Christina Meyer is high. Ball one. Meyer scored two runs so far today. Singled in the first. And this one she drills in the left center gap. Christina hits first. She's going second, and she's in with a stand-up double to start the Lady Rams' fourth inning. Base hit. I mean, fortunately, but not unfortunately, I mean, with the wind that we have, your center fielder's playing 100% more over to your right right now. So they hit it to the left, they're going to find that gap, and it's more likely going to get through. Right. Tanae Smith comes in. All Tanae did was... 
hit a two-run homer or a solo shot her last time up, actually. Taps it just to the left of the pitcher. Shane Levin off the mound to throw Tanae out. So one three on the put out. And going down to third is Christina Meyer. Was a two-run homer last inning. Going to bring up Tegan Norton. Tegan was robbed of a base hit last inning by the left fielder Avery White. Came in, and made a fantastic play off the line, shot off the bat of Norton. She hits this one deep, shortstop. Shortstop Brittany Brunts fields it, can't make a play. That was going to be an infield single, no matter what. Holding at third was. Christina Meyer. So she went to kind of grab it out of a glove and she fumbled a little bit there and she just, I mean, yep. she made the smart decision not yep. to throw it, make yep. a bad throw. Yeah, I don't know that she would have thrown out Tegan anyways had she thrown it. She just basically saved the run from scoring. So Rams have runners at first and third with one out here on the bottom of the fourth. Paige Gamby steps in. First pitch to Paige is high and away. Down to second base goes Norton. So we said last time, this would be a great opportunity for Gamby's first home run of the season. Page coming in, 467 with five runs batted in. She had an RBI in the first. On a single. Go get crushed here, get so Rams are runners at second and third. They lead eight to one here in the bottom of the fourth. Chain 11 came in. Two innings ago in place of starter Meg Hinkle. Shane Levin's pitch. Pitch stays high and away to Gamby. Two balls and no strikes. On deck is Skyly Zolman. Skyly with a solo homer, her last plate appearance. Back to back home runs by Zolman and Spangler. 2 0 pitch to Gamby. Fouled at the plate. Bounces off her shoulder. Two balls and a strike to Page. Shane Lovins, 2-1 pitch. Sky foul. First base side, the catcher, Abby Taylor, tried to field it with that nasty wind. So she's kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> she was doing the best she could and just couldn't get there. Like trying to catch a paper airplane when you throw it up in the breeze. Two balls and a strike. Or two balls and two strikes, actually, is to count to Paige Gamby. Swung on, fouled to Courts Fairchild at third, who missed Amy the ball. Missed Error on Fairchild. That should be a lap. Got to have those, Coach Fairchild. You're going to do some laps. That's a lap. That's so a fence lap. back. <laughs> Got to make those plays. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Paige Gamby. Runners lead from second and third. Gamby drills within the nice. gap in the left that center. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Meyer scores. Here comes... Tegan Norton, she scores. Lady Rams lead 10-1 here in the bottom of the fourth. Gamby with a two RBI double. I'll bring up Skyly Zolman. <coughs> Skyly with three runs batted in, a double and a home run so far tonight or tonight this afternoon. First pitch is a ball. Manson Spangler on deck. Chain Levin's 1 0. Hits Skyly in the shoulder. So Skyly is going to go down to first base. It's going to bring up Madison Spangler, who hit a solo homer her last plate appearance. Madison has officially one for one. She had a sacrifice fly in the first with an RBI, and she had a solo homer in the third with an RBI. I think I might have got her in the ribs where she's like grabbing at herself there. Rams with runners at first and second. First pitch to Spangler is a ball. Still one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Don't forget, double header today. Get on here and watch game two. One-oh pitch coming from Shane Levin. 
Drilled shortstop side. The shortstop order second for one. Back to first for the double play. Nice play by Parkway. Bruns to Miller to Stevenson. Spangler nailed it. Unfortunately, she hit it right at the shortstop runs. 6-4-3 on the twin killing for the Lady Rams. They did score two runs. And they did so on three base hits. No errors and just one left. Top of inning number five we go here at Snore High School. Snore 10. And Parkview 1 on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla. Proud members of the Tenora Athletic Boosters say go Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Top of the fifth we go. Keith Brown and Kayla Rick with you on the Saturday. Lady Rams lead 10-1. to one. Two, three, and four for Parkway. Louth, Hinkle, and Stevenson face Skyly Zolman. First pitch from Skyly. Outside corner, strike one. Excellent defense again here by the Lady Rams, Kaylee. Oh, 100%. When blowing from left to right, pretty stiff, as you can tell out there for those watching. Slapped by the third baseman, Tanae Smith. So Louth starts the fifth off with the single just under the glove of Tanae. If you were to ask Tanae, should I have had that? She probably would say yes. But when you're playing them that close and they slap it by you <laughs> that yeah, quickly. Like she just didn't get her glove down yeah, yep. far enough and it went right underneath her. It's going to bring up Meg Hinkle. Swung on and missed. Strike one to Hinkle. Hinkle over two. Struck out swinging in the first and popped out for great play by Christina Meyer in the third. Zolman's 0-1 to Hinkle, runner at first. Swung on, well, check swing, actually. Strike two to Meg Hinkle. Paige Stevenson on deck for Parkway. Coach Dover, fourth season down there. 55-30 and 30 overall for Coach Dover. Again, he took the Panthers to the Final Four last year in Division Four. One ball and two strikes to Hinkle now. Runner at first is Louth. Nobody out for Parkway. They trail by nine. Check swing. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. I think Gabby's doing a good job of keeping those in front of her, too. I think she's only allowed, I think, one to get past her, and it was just a, yep. a pitch that was a little wild, like high wild. 2-2 two, two pitch from Skyly. Crown ball. That's how you do See, it, Coach yeah, Fairchild, right there. Some lessons. Coach Dover down there shows... Here's how you do it. <laughs> it's two hands. You got to use two hands, not one. Let's send that video to Coach Fairchild. <laughs> <laughs> two, two pitch coming. Change up. Little pop fly. First base side. Zoe Billing snags it, but a great pitch there by Skyly. Took a lot off of it to get Hinkle for out number one. Runner stayed at first. Louth now one out. Paige Stevenson steps in. She is 0 for 2. She came in batting 652. Strike called on the first pitch. Even the dog down there. The dog's excited. all excited. <laughs> He's, I mean, it's a big dog, and it's sitting on that guy's lap. <laughs> it's probably keeping him warm. 1 0 pitch was... just missed. Two balls and no strikes. I don't know how I felt. That was in the same spot as the last pitch. Is <laughs> he <laughs> like it? Skyly's 2-0 pitch coming to Stevenson. High and away, ball three. Three balls and no strikes to number four hitter, Paige Stevenson. Oh, 2-1. That was one of those pitches. I don't know which one was a strike, but was it the last one? Well, no, she did. I think it was her first pitch. Might have been oh, a, was it? it was a strike. 
So two ones that counts to Stevenson. That one's low, three balls and a strike for sure now. Ralph led off with the single under the glove of Smith the third. Stevenson with a 3-1 count. Adrian Miller on deck for Parkview. That's ball four. High and away. Down to second goes Louth. And Stevenson trots down the first with a one-out walk. It's going to bring up Miller. Miller is 0 for two, or actually 1 for 2. She singled in the second. She came in batting 571. Two homers and 13 runs batted in through six games for Parkview. Parkview is 5-1. and one. Lady Rams 5-0. and oh. First pitch from Skyly. Fouled back. Strike one. Marie Temple on deck. Coming in, as we said, Parkview averaging 12 runs a game and batting 460 as a team. 0-1 pitch. Outside, ball one. One ball, one strike, one out. Two runners on for Parkway. They trail 10-1 as they bat here in the top of the fifth. Miller bats from the left side of the plate. Swung on, fouled behind us, out of play. Ram center fielder Madison Spangler playing way over in left center field. Big gap between Spangler <laughs> and Lucas out there. Really it's like a country mile. <laughs> One, two pitch. Hit right at call it. Christina call Meyer, it. and it lands between Meyer, Norton, and Spangler. Fires over to third, not in time to get the runner. That's going to load the bases. No, no actually, he did it get her, a, right? Yeah, it was a it was force, a force out. Yes, that's a force out. I thought I that she see, didn't. I couldn't see the person on first here because of the camera and the tripod. <laughs> I, I didn't see Tanae tag, so I figured she was safe. But, yes, that's right. That's a force out. Nice alert play by Christina Meyer for out number two. The ever- Present 7-5 put out. I was very nervous about, because we had three of them coming in, and I don't know if anyone was calling it. And I was it nervous was about the collision. Three-way collision. It's <laughs> going to bring up Emery Temple. Temple reached and scored on there in the fourth. So two runners on. Stevenson at second and Miller at first. One ball and two strikes is the count to Temple. Because I'm trying to adjust my scorebook here with all that mess on the last <laughs> batter. <laughs> One, two pitch. Swung on and missed. Down goes Temple. Four. Park wave. The inning kind of fizzled up there. No runs for Parkway. Two hits. No Lady Ram errors and two left on for Parkway. Bottom of the fifth we go here at Sonora High School. Lady Rams 10 and Parkway 1. We'll be back right after this here on Sonora Rams Live. The Adam Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Batten Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Back to the action on Sonora Rams Sports Live. Back at Sonora High School, 10-1 Lady Rams as we head to the bottom of inning number five, Billings, Starkey, and Korber to face Bryn Shane Levin. Shane Levin came on in relief in the second inning of starter Meg Hinkle. Lee Rams plated six off Hinkle. First pitch to Billings. She swings and misses. Strike one. Billings had an RBI single in the first and grounded the short in the third. Oh, 
The lefty Shen, Shane Levin, 0-1 pitch to Billings. That's outside. One ball and one strike. Lady Rams need a run here in the fifth to give it a 10 run margin. Ground ball right at the third baseman. Temple scoops it up, fires over to Stevenson. Round number one, retiring Billings. 5 3 on the putout. That's going to bring up number eight hitter, Mickey Starkey. Starkey, designated player. Hitting for Katie Lucas. Shane Levin's pitch outside. Ball one to Starkey. Starkey 0 for 2 came in batting 364. Pitch tapped at the plate foul. A ball on a strike. One out, base is empty. Out of the fifth, Lady Rams up 10 1. And game one of a doubleheader. Oh, one ball, one strike to pitch. That's high. Two balls and a strike. To Mickey Starkey. Trinity Corber on deck for Tenora. Saw me in 55 at the start of their game on our David Frank weather forecast. Currently it's 58 here at Tenora High School. 2-1 pitch is fouled off. Two balls and two strikes. Temperature says 58, but the gusting wind here more says 42, probably. <laughs> Hearing that doggy's all bundled up down there. He's got his coat on. <laughs> Multicolored jacket as well for that little feller. 2-2 two -two pitch from Shane Love, and she steps off. Gets behind the circle there. Wants the reset of the pitches. Corber steps out, takes a couple practice swings. Corbett digs back in from the right side. 2-2 two -two pitch from Shane Levin. Check swing, stays high. Three balls and two strikes to Mickey Starkey. Swung on and missed. Down goes Starkey for out number two. For Shane Levin, that's her first strikeout. Base is empty, two outs now. Number nine hitter, Trinity Corber, steps in. Corber 0 for 2. Pitch up and in, leans Corber back. One ball and no strikes to the number nine hitter. She's come in at 111 with an RBI in this young season. I don't think she's trying to get hit again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Probably a little uh, timid after that. Yeah, hitting the second. Hit off the shin. 1-0 pitch. Catches the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Shane Lovins 1-1. One, one. Swung on. Fouled back. A ball and two strikes. Two out, base is empty. Rams lead by nine here in the bottom of the fifth. Game two scheduled to start at approximately two o'clock. Let's hope they don't rush that one on us like they did the oh, last time. Oh, like last time. Yeah, <laughs> like 12 seconds in between games. With nothing prepared for lineups. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Corber goes down swinging back to back strikeouts for Shane Levin. Rams for the first time today go quietly. No runs. No hits, no errors, nobody left. Top of the six we go here at Sonora High School. Crop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard, Sonora Lady Rams 10, Parkway Panthers 1. Brother Tacos works endlessly with the help of their kids to bring you the best authentic Mexican food to defiance in the surrounding areas. Brother Taco is a family-owned and operated catering service and a pop-up food vendor. No matter where we are or how we're serving, we have one goal in mind, to make you and your guests feel like family. Please call or text today at 567-344-0055. Brother Tacos is here to share their food with you. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Graduation season is coming up. Make sure you get a hold of Brothers Tacos catering and you will not be disappointed. We had them for one of our basketball games versus Archibald this past late winter. And boy, oh boy, was that good. 
I think we wanted to stay up there and eat instead of broadcast a basketball game. <laughs> Can't go wrong with Brother Taco. Brother Taco is catering. Joe and Sheila Salinas do a fantastic job. Check them out on Facebook. Shoot them a message and get your graduation spread planned. And said, trust me, you will not be disappointed. Every Taylor singled her last at bat. She is one for two. First pitch is ball. Bowman's 1 0. Hit second base side. Billings with a backhand stab. Tries to beat the runner to the bag, and she does. Nice play out there by Zoe Billings at first. Looked like she was going to let it go through to Corber, but Billings snagged it and raced Taylor to the bag. <laughs> I don't think she was so confident that she caught it at first. She kind of like looked like, oh, I do have it, and then took off to first. <laughs> Going to bring up Shane Levin. So, Bren, second to bat for her. First pitch fouled it off first base side. For her batting, you would never be able to tell that she pitches and fields left. Like, Not left at all. She singled, actually singled in the fourth. The last inning. Or no, the fourth inning. Skyley's pitch, check swing. Just inside, says the umpire. Count evens at the ball. A strike. One out. Bases empty. 10-1. Lady Rams here in the top of inning number six. Dolan's 1-1. Swung on and missed. Strike two. One-two pitch from Skyly. Swung on, fouled at the plate. Shane Levin stays alive. Three strikeouts for Skyly. Not one of those dominating performers where she's just going to blow by everybody. She's letting her fielders do the work, and they're doing a fantastic job here today. Change up just stays a bit high. A ball or two balls and two strikes now to Bryn Shane Levin. The way it kind of came in and dropped a little bit, I thought it would have been in that zone, but I think it was just a tad bit too high. It didn't quite, quite drop fast enough. Swung on line right at the right fielder, Kaylee Lucas. Snags it for out number two. And as we said a few times here, Kaylee, that Coach Fairchild and his staff has positioned the Lady Rams perfectly today in game one. I don't really think she moved. That was hit right at <laughs> like it. it I think she like kind of moved her feet a little bit, just trying to get situated and came right at her. Every white first pitch swinging, bloops Billings, it to yeah, she's on fire tonight. First base <laughs> and Zoe Billings snags it for out number three. Quickly goes Parkway in the top of the six. No runs, no hits, no Lady Ram errors, no Panthers left on base. Bottom of the six we go here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. 10-1, Lady Rams lead the Parkway Panthers. Hey, you. Are you tired of staring at the same digi colors at your home or business? Prosperity Painting is here to help change that. Prosperity Painting is a local painting contractor specializing in interior and exterior painting for residential and commercial homes and buildings. No job is too big. No job is too small for Prosperity Painting. Everything from painting, staining, epoxy floors, and wallpaper removal, Prosperity Painting is here to brighten up your life. They will make your old look new again. Check out Prosperity Painting and its amazing portfolio of work on their Facebook page. And be sure to give Mike a call for a at 419-789-0939. Prosperity Painting says, Go Rams! A special thank you to the families of the Schlegel family. Schlegel Family Farms, Chris, Becky Kennedy, Ian, and Lucas. And to Laura Kepi, a lifelong Tenora Rams supporter. Another big thanks to Vince Salidas and Michelle Bacon and their family for supporting the Tenora Rams and all of us here at Tenora Rams Live. Bottom of the sixth here at Sonora High School. Keith Rowan, Kaylee Runk with you. Lady Rams need a run to end it. They lead 10 to 1 here in the bottom of the sixth. Top of the lineup. One, two, and three. Meyer, Smith, and Norton to face Bryn. Shane Levin. Christina Meyer, a great game one here. Singleton scored in the first. Scored in the second. Doubled and scored in the fourth and played great defense out there. Fantastic game for Christina Meyer. 
Swings and fouls it back. There you go, Kaylee. Boom. (laughs) First one of the year. That we can remember, at least. (laughs) Shade 11 ahead of the count. No balls and a strike. Bryn came on in inning number two in place of starter Meg Hinkle. Well, one pitch just misses a ball and a strike. Again, we said nice crowd here on this Saturday. Parkway coming up from downtown. About an hour 15, I want to guess. 1 1 pitch. Drilled right field. Back goes the right fielder. One hop off the wall. Miller fields it, but not before Christina Meyer checks in with a leadoff double. That's her second double and third hit of the game. Gonna bring up Tanae Smith. The right fielder was kind of. I think she thought she was gonna run into that fence. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think she quite knew how close she was to her if it was gonna go over or not. Smith singled and scored in the first. Hit a two-run homer in the second. Also back to the pitcher. Her last plate appearance. Squares her on the bunt. Strike called. Fired the basically winning run. I if you want to call it down there at second with nobody out. Ten-one. Lady Rams here in the bottom of the sixth. Oh, one count coming to Tanae. Hits it first base side. Shane Levin snags it, fires over to Stevenson for out number one. But Tanae did what she's supposed to do. She got the run over to third base with one out. Basically, it's like a bunt. One, three on the put out. Tegan Norgan can end it here. Tegan singled and scored in the fourth. She is one for three. Meyer down at third. Shane Lubbins pitch coming to Norton. Pitch stays a little bit high. Ball one. There's the ones that are confusing me a little bit because I mean he's calling them sometimes, since so I'm not sure like quite where variation there of when he's calling it a ball and a strike. He's got a very open zone. <laughs> <laughs> pitch is a little bit high. Two balls and no strikes to Tegan. Tegan, 471 coming in. Friend Shane Lubbin, the lefty 2-0 pitch coming to Tegan. Stays high. Three balls and no strikes. On deck is Paige Gamby. Coach Fairchild down at third. Coach Furlan down at first. Shane Lubbin's 3-0 coming to Tegan. High ball four. Gordon works a four-pitch walk. Paige Gamby. Singled and scored with an RBI in the first. She doubled with two RBIs in the fourth. Have a timeout on the field. And Trey Stover is going to go out and talk to his infield on what to do here because, again, that's the winning run down at third for the Lady Rams. Christina Meyer down at third. Tegan Norton on at first. And Paige Gamby, 467 coming in. Had a fantastic year as a freshman. So that's going to oh, load the gonna, bases to for, have a force at home. They're going to walk Gamby. So Gamby's going to be intentionally walked to load him up. So bases full of Rams with one out. Obviously, the play's at the plate. That's going to bring up Skyly Zolman. I don't know if that's a position for the other team that I'd want to put myself in, but. Pitch is a strike. They're just trying to get a force out at home, but bringing up the hottest hitter for Tenora, <laughs> Skyly Zolman. First pitch is a strike to Skyly. Shane Lubbins 0-1. Hit foul just outside the bag at third. Shane Lubbins ahead of Zola. No balls and two strikes. Skyly with a double and two RBIs in the first. Zola home run in the third. And she was hit by a pitch in the fourth. Races full of Lady Rams. They lead 10-1. Pitch to Skyly. Stays high. 
A ball and two strikes. Madison Spangler awaits on deck, but Skyly can end it here. The sophomore, Shane Levin. Lefties 1-2 to Skyly. Swung on. Hit to right field. Nichols oh, underneath she it. She drops it. it and end it here as Christina Meyer comes in from third. That'll be the game. And that is it for Tenora here in the sixth inning. They get a run. They do so on one hit, one error, and Rams leave two on base. Final from Tenora High School. Lady Rams with an 11 1 win. Lady Rams improved to 6 0. And Parkway falls to 5 and 2. Coming up, we'll have a brief post game show. We'll get things around for game two. We'll have the Bidlack Insurance and Investments post game show coming up. We'll have our Higby Embroidery Player of the Game, and we'll do it right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Final in game one here at Tenora High School. Lady Rams with a six inning 11-1 victory. Fort Tenora, 11 runs, 12 hits, no errors, and they left four on base. And for Parkway, one run, eight hits, one error. That was actually right there at the end. And Parkway left eight on base. Skyly Zolman wins it for Tenora. And for Skyly, she improves to 5-0. and oh. And Meg Henkel will be the loser. That is her second loss. She goes to 4-2. and two. Time of the game, just under 90 minutes. And again, Lady Rams with a 10-run win. They scored four runs in the first, two in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth. And Skyly Zolman with that fly ball to right field, which has dropped out there, scored Christina Meyer, ended it for their 11 runs. Only run for Parkway came in the fourth inning. That was a unearned run as Emery Temple scored for Parkway. So we'll have the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game coming up, and we'll do it right after this. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School, as well as the Tri-County area, since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroidery is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back here, final of game one. Lady Rams with 11-1 win, and here is Kaylee's favorite part of every <laughs> broadcast, the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. And well, and it's games like the like like today that makes it really hard to do it because, I mean, they did so good playing as a team out there on the field, which is, I mean, you can't ask for a better They're, for better playing than that. I mean, granted, I mean, they had a couple towards the end where they kind of bobbled or had a couple errors, but it wasn't anything that kept them down or kept them from, yep. from doing what they needed to do. Played great defensively. Yeah. Um, but for this one, we're gonna we're gonna look at our outfield. Um, we had Christina Meyer, I mean, out there in left field. I mean, in with her, she's in left field, right field, center. I mean, she plays that outfield yep. like she owns it out yes, there. Yes, she does. She doesn't hesitate, she runs after, she goes after. I mean, even even at bat, she did amazing at bat. She, oh, let's see. I mean, she was on, 
No, she's pretty much on base every time she came up to bat. Yep. <laughs> yes, she was. She scored what? Uh, she scored four runs, had a single, and two doubles, and she hit into a fielder's choice. So she uh, she had a fantastic game defensively as well as Kaylee said out there. A huge force play when that ball found fire dropped between the three outfielders, and she was alert enough to scoop it up and fire over to third for uh, the force out. That was a big point of the game, actually, when Parkway was trying to uh, mount a rally to get back into the game. So, Yeah, so, I mean, we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it to Christina Meyer. I mean, for I mean, she had a great at-bat. I mean, she does amazing on the outfield, knowing where her plays are at. Even, yep. I mean, even when she's not actually catching the ball, I mean, I mean, she still hustles to get in and tries to keep it in front of her as much as she can. I mean, she does great on the outfield. She was definitely made to play outfield. <laughs> so player of the game will go to Christina Meyer in game one. So stay tuned. We're going to hurry up and gather things around here. We'll have game two scheduled for two o'clock, but we'll see if they stick to that. Because last time, last Saturday, they did not. So for Taylor Runk, Keith Brown, final game one. Lady Rams with an 11-1 win over Parkway. We'll be back with game two in approximately 30 minutes.